Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with the Parish of Jarrow and Simonside. Fingers crossed I have just managed to put the link into the comments section. It's not saying that it's there yet, so hopefully it will be there. So, it's not showing up. Hold on. Let's see if I can. That yeah, looks better. Good morning, Carol. Oh, you've got it twice. There we go. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, I do hope that you have had a wonderful weekend and you are all nicely re renewed and refreshed for this lovely new week that we have ahead of us. Oh. Hopefully it looks like it's going to be a nice sunny one today, so fingers crossed as we go through today, it will be. Um, if you are, obviously I've got the link in there, so fingers crossed if you are using the app you can use that then you'll be able to follow it if not if you are using your bible um we will be using psalm 98 and the old testament canticle is from isaiah chapter 12 verses 2 to 6 and the scripture this this morning is mark chapter 6 verses 45 to the end so just like to say nice warm hello to everyone who is going to be joining us this morning and those who will be joining us later. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us this morning and thank you for coming together. Before we start the morning prayer, we'll just light our candle this morning because Jesus is the light of the world. So if we just like to take a nice Deep breaths in this morning, just breathing God's love. Let it wash over us and allow it to fill us with peace. Just breathe in, breathe in God's love. And as you breathe out, just let out all your worries, your frustrations, your fears, anything that just might be weighing you down this morning. And that might be Holding you back from being able to, to meet God this morning. Just breathe in his love. Let it wash over you. And just let go of anything that is weighing you down this morning. Just keep taking those deep breaths as we come together in prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us. Let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives. And your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so in the light of your presence, O God, set your heart on fire with love for you. Now, and forever. Amen. Oh, good morning, Lorraine, Judith and Evelyn. 
Leslie. Leslie suddenly all popped up there. So I apologise if later on we come to the, the reflections if I don't get you because obviously my computer must be running a little bit slow with, with comments. Now we come to Psalm 98 and the refrain is, the Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his deliverance as he is openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre. With the lyre and the voice of the melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sound praises before the Lord, the King. The Lord has made known his salvation. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out together before the Lord for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. The Lord has made known his salvation. Lord God, just and true, you make your salvation known in the sight of the nations. Tune the song of our hearts to the music of creation as you come among us to judge the earth through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our Old Testament canticle this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 2 to 6 a song of deliverance and if you are following the liturgy along at home please do join in by seeing the even numbered verses and the refrain at the beginning and the end all the earth shout out and sing for joy for great in your midst is the holy one all the earth shout and sing for joy for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. On that day you will see, give thanks to the Lord call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises who has triumphed gloriously, let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Oh, good morning, Sonny, and we hope to catch up with you later. Don't worry about it.
Now this brings us to our scripture reading this morning, which is Mark chapter 6, verse 44 to the end. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, where he, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the lake, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the lake. He intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. For all they saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then. He got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves. The hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gernesset, and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised him, and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Take a moment there to have a pause and reflect on any of the scripture that you have heard this morning. And if anything touched you and you would like to share it, then please do share it in the comment section. Just give us a moment to reflect. Just going to go and talk through my reflection first and hope by the time I get through some of your thoughts have popped up because obviously my comment section is a little bit slow this morning. Um, so if you go back to this passage at the beginning it says immediately where they've just been, the bit that happens just before this passage is there is perhaps another equally well known passage, the feeding of the 5,000 and after such an event, such a well-known popular event, Jesus isn't hanging around. He immediately is about to move on. He sends his disciples away onto the next place. But Jesus, interestingly, doesn't go with them. What he does is he dismisses the crowds and he leaves them and he heads up towards the mountains to go and pray. Now, what this tells us is that Although mission and being with people and helping people and meeting their needs is important and it is something that we must be doing, 
as Jesus himself was there for 5,000. And then he sent the disciples on to somewhere else. What is also really important that we must take care of is to make sure that we spend time in prayer so that we too are refreshed and rested so that we can go back out into the mission. It is this constant feeding cycle. You can't have one without the other. And the disciples, if we note in the passage, they obediently go where Jesus has taught them. They get in the boat and they go and sail off. But the waters where Jesus has sent them is difficult, it's adverse, it's not an easy situation. They are come against those strong winds and even though they're rowing with all their might, they're not getting anywhere and they're becoming desperate. And what's interesting is Jesus notices that they're struggling. He knows. And he does go and help them in the morning. And this is a lesson for all disciples, not just the ones there on that boat. It's that sometimes we will be sent to difficult places, to difficult situations, and it's not for suffering's sake, but rather our destination lies through the struggle. And I'm sure there have been times in our lives, and there will be times again, when we believe that we are on our own, when Jesus or God is nowhere to be seen, we are desperate, we're struggling, and we do not know when we're getting known where, and we're just saying, where is he? Where is God? Why is he not working for us? Why is he not helping us? But this passage tells us that not only is he aware of our struggles, but he acts on our behalf. And in fact, he is with us and he is working for us. But sometimes, we do need to realise that our efforts will not be enough. We do not have the resources. Reaching the point of helplessness and desperation can actually be a step forward spiritually. For it removes our own ego, our reliance on ourselves. We need to put our faith and trust in God. For anything is possible through and with him. And with Jesus walking on the water, this reveals that he is more than a prophet and a teacher that they thought at the time. And the line that it says he tended to pass them by has caused some struggles with some people and they think, well, just gonna walk by and leave them. But that's not what it's getting at. And that's also, if you put that, maybe that's why the disciples' hearts are hard and they don't quite understand either what God is trying to say, what Jesus is trying to say here. The, the line he intended to pass them by it refers to to pass by, which is the times when God revealed himself, such as with Moses at Sinai in Exodus 33 or Horeb to Elijah at 1 Kings 19. Jesus is not only walking on water, but he is also passing by. And this is the language that God uses to reveal himself. And it is made, the connection is also made further with the, when Jesus tells him, do not be afraid, it is I. Again here, he is making connections with Moses. And he answers, I am in Exodus 3. Jesus is saying that the God that created the world is now with them here walking on water. God is with them in their struggles. They need not be afraid. Not because as disciples they will never face struggles, but because God is with them in them. And as we said, the disciples seem to be missing what Jesus is trying to prepare them for. They're not quite getting the message. They've missed the understanding that they're seeing with the loaves. And now they're missing what you're seeing here. With the walking on water, with the passing on by. The disciples' hearts are hardened. They don't recognise who Jesus is. And this is 
plays direct contrast with Mark when they go, Finn and didn't quite get to their destination, they got a little bit south, and the people who they meet are faithful and they're flocking, they recognise, they see who Jesus is. They recognise that Jesus is God incarnate and that we can be assured of his faithful presence and we can have confidence in him in any storm. So even when we are faithless, Jesus remains faithful. And in doing so, he redeemed us and gave us the gift of salvation and the forgiveness of our sins when he died for us on the cross. Oh, we have some comments, brilliant. Hold on, let's see. So Carol, they thought he was a ghost. Yeah. And Judith, it is I, do not be afraid. Carol, I always think of the footprints in the sand. Yeah, that is walking with us. Well, I've lost your comments again. It's not going great this morning for this, is it? Yeah, the, the footprint in the sand is a really good one. Thank you for those. It's a sense that he's, when you're not there, I'm walking with him, holding you one set. Thank you for your comments there. I'm sorry I wasn't quite as interactive as I normally would be. So, let's respond to the scripture with Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in Lord, the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And that brings us to the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. And again, if you are following the liturgy at home, please do join in with the Benedictus. The refrain at the beginning and the end is you have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now 
and shall be for ever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. time of intercessions so just take a moment to still ourselves to come to spend some time with God this morning in the power of the spirit and in union with Christ let us pray to the Father faithful God as we journey through life, we will go through hardships. We will face struggles and the depths of despair. May we grasp that Jesus is the great I am who is present with us in the storm and may that change us. May we draw comfort and strength Soften our hearts, O oh Lord, so that we may understand and know him. May we recognise who he is. May his presence give us confidence, no matter how the sea may rage or the winds blow. Let his light shine a light on our paths and keep them straight. May we place our trust in you, in your wisdom. May we have the strength to lean on you and call out to you in times of need. Help us to put our own ego aside. May we recognise that what is impossible for us is possible for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And merciful God, we lift to you all those who are currently in a storm and for those whom the winds are adverse and the storm clouds are gathering. For those who are exhausted, for all those who are desperate and know that they cannot do this alone. May they feel your presence and know that they are not alone. We pray, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to comfort them, to give them strength and courage, to trust in you. May you be at work in their lives. And we lift to you all those who are affected by man-made and natural disasters for those whom the disaster has left them fleeing in fear for those who are homeless injured or bereaved we pray that your loving kindness will pour out through the hands and mouths of those that they meet May they find a friendly face, kind words, and a gentle smile. We pray that they are treated with dignity and respect as they attempt to rebuild their lives from the ashes and rubble of their past and present. May they know hope in their heart. And may you guide them towards reconciliation and peace within themselves 
and with those around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And compassionate God, we give you thanks for all those who come to the help of those in need, for those who serve others. May they find rest in you when they are weary and exhausted from their toil. And we give you thanks for their hard work and dedication, the sacrifices that they have made for the sake of our loved ones, for relieving the suffering of your beloved children, whether near or far. In every act, no matter how small, that is made in and with your love, we help to build your kingdom. Help us to be the change that we wish to see in the world. May we always act with your love, grace and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And faithful God, we give thanks for your church, for our sovereign Queen Elizabeth, the Archbishops Justin and Stephen, and for the Diocese and Bishops from wherever we are, and for those of Durham, Bishops Paul and Sarah, and for all their teams. And we pray for our ordained and lay leaders, church wardens, those on the PCC, and all those who serve the church with their gifts and their presence. May your blessings be upon them as they work for your glory. And we lift to you the parish of Jarrow and Sideside. May you tune the song of our hearts to the music of creation. For you, O oh Lord, are our strength and our song. And loving God, we bring before you all our tasks today. We give thanks for all the organisations and the people who have been involved with HAP, especially all the volunteers who have graciously given up their time and gifts to help those in our community. And we pray that they all receive the support that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we bring before you all who suffer, especially those whose ailments are hidden. Pour out your healing love upon them. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your loving arms and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. O oh God, be not far from us, especially from those in need. Bind their wounds, O oh Lord. And we lift to you all those suffering in mind, body or spirit, and all those being cared for in our parish, especially. John Ellison, Jessica McCaskill, Carrie Waggett, Doreen Moig, Andrew Cavock, Mrs Hewitt, Pat Middleton, Dorothy Macbeth, Stella Matthews, Michael Hughes, Chris Haynes, John Pike, Anne Taylor, Rod Taylor, Carol Woodfield, Christine, Beatrice Yeston, Wynne Anaslate, Gillian, 
Mavis, Grant Macbeth, Susan Fisher, Ruth Banks, James Shepherd, Marjorie Carruthers, Brian Henderson, Anne Henderson, Brenda Prophet, Stan, Gary, Jim, Joan Thurburn, Ashton, Marion, Betty Hall, Isla Muhammad, Gary Patterson, Jonathan Hall, June Barris, Irene McConaughey, Judith, Derek Austin, Tracy, Valerie, Tony, Lisa, Michelle, George Dunn, Marjorie Tao, Maureen McCoughlin, Justine, and for all those people on our hearts today. We pray that in the midst of their suffering and pain, your Holy Spirit will bring them the love, healing and support and hope that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And compassionate God, we hold in your presence all those who are receiving end of life care, all their friends and family, and those who are caring for them. May they know your comforting presence at this difficult time. May they draw solace and strength from you. And we also pray for those who have died recently. May they find love and peace in your presence. We pray by name for the repose of the soul of Sir Harrison. And we pray for all those who are forever changed by grief and loss. We commend them in your eternal care. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of silence, please bring before God all that is on your heart to stay. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we do pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving those, those things of which our conscience is afraid, <clears throat> and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merit and meditation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you ever so much for joining us in worship and prayer this morning. We have come to our last week of half activities. Um, crazy has gone so fast. But today there will be the Munch Holiday Club at St John's the Baptist on Nain Street um, from 11 till 3, where there will be a light lunch. Um, Stagecoach Performing Arts will be back. And there will be some craft activities happening as well. We're going to finish, trying to finish off a bit of the stained glass window. So please do look out for the red gazebra out the front and pop along. You should be in the hall. Um, the next services that we have are, will be morning prayer tomorrow with Leslie um, at 8 o'clock, followed by an in-person and live streamed Eucharist service at St. Peter's York Avenue. So please do join us in whatever way you can. It will be absolutely lovely to see you. And I wish you all a wonderful Monday and week ahead. Sorry. And as we go out today, may we be faithful when the wind blows and the storm clouds gather. 